Every Barcelona manager before Ernesto Valverde has at some point become Barcelona's former manager. With Valverde currently firmly on the hot seat, I thought we should take a look at how many of his predecessors ended their time at the club. Hi, I'm Dan Hilton, and this is a Barcelona podcast, YouTube exclusive. We'll start with Johan Cruyff and what we'll call the beginning of Champions League expectations. A falling out with Josep Luis Nunez after going trophyless in his final two seasons led to Cruyff being ousted, even though he had won the club 11 trophies. I think this relationship and situation deserves its own video later. Carlos Ruschak took over. A longtime assistant for Cruyff who had been on Luis Aragonés' staff before that and a caretaker manager briefly before Cruyff was appointed. He was again the head coach in May of 1996 when Cruyff was sacked, but Bobby Robson replaced him and he became a scout. Fortunately for Barcelona, Ruschak did his homework and discovered Lionel Messi and the rest is history. Sir Bobby Robson, a legend of football, was only Barcelona manager for one year and left under different circumstances than anyone else mentioned. After winning three cups and being named European Manager of the Year, he moved to a general manager position by his own choice. Louis van Gaal came in his place, but Robson didn't stay at Barcelona for long. He moved to PSV for the following season to take over as manager again. His time with Barcelona was brief, but who knows how the next few seasons would have gone if Robson had stayed in charge. Louis van Gaal came in as a successor to Cruyff. He was Dutch and had managed Ajax to a Champions League trophy a few seasons prior. He won two La Liga titles and a Copa del Rey, but he was detested by the media and clashed with his players, Rivaldo in particular. After three seasons in charge, the 1999-2000 season was barely gone before Van Hall resigned, finishing second to Deportivo de la Coruña for the La Liga title. He accepted defeat to the media as he departed. Friends of the press, I am leaving. Congratulations. But that's not the last the Catalan media would see of him. After three years behind the scenes, Lorenzo Serra Ferrer took over and lasted until April of the following season, getting the sack after a 3-1 loss to Osasuna that landed Barcelona in 5th and 17 points off of Real Madrid, who topped the table. Luchak returned after a stint in 1998 with Japan with Yokohama Fluges and continuing with Barcelona as a scout. When Serra Ferrer was let go near the end of the 2000-2001 season, Luchak again took over. He finally got his chance, and on that final match day came one of the first memorable moments of the new millennium. Rivaldo's 87th minute winner qualified Barcelona for the Champions League and got him the permanent job for the following season. However, he lost to Real Madrid in the Champions League semifinals, was knocked out of the Copa del Rey by Catalan Minos U.E. Figueres, and lost the Copa Catalunya final to C.F. Balaguer. These three transgressions were enough to lose him his job. Van Hall returned and didn't have much success either. He did well enough in the Champions League, but Barcelona was a mess in La Liga. Six wins, four draws, and eight defeats from the first 18 league matches pushed him to leave with the club in 12th place and three points above the relegation zone in January of 2003. Yikes. Star signing Juan Roman Riquelme is a legend in his own right and was brought in to replace Rivaldo after the Brazilian was released by Van Hall. Riquelme never played his best position at Barcelona and disappointed while Rivaldo won the Champions League with AC Milan. With previous stints at Real Zaragoza, Real Madrid, two stints at Real Oviedo, and three stints at Atletico Madrid, Radomir Antic was recruited by Juan Gasper to take over for Van Hall in January. Antic was tasked with cleaning up Van Hall's mess, and he did enough to end the season on a high note. Nine wins, six draws, and three losses got Barcelona to sixth place. His greatest contribution, though, was integrating Victor Valdez and Andres Iniesta into the team. The squad fell in the quarterfinal of the Champions League and Antic had an uphill battle to survive the change of president, with Juan Laporta wanting major changes, so Antic got the boot. Laporta brought in Frank Reichardt to usher in a new era. The Dutchman struggled early on, but was given the backing from the board, and the team started to improve. Ricard won a Champions League trophy and bagged two wins at the Santiago Bernabeu, but his magic eventually wore off after a semi-final exit to Manchester United in 2008. He stated that he didn't intend on leaving, but in May 2008, after a 4-1 shellacking at the hands of Real Madrid, Laporta thanked Ricard for his service and sent him on his way. He's still on the sidelines in Manchester, but Pep Guardiola is a living legend for the kool aids of the modern era. 14 trophies in 4 years with an unmatched energy. With his rolling contract renewed annually, Guardiola held the power and he chose to leave the club after the 2011-12 season. Clearly his time in charge had taken its toll, and he even took a year-long sabbatical before returning to coach Bayern Munich. Pep's assistant Tito Villanova took over that next season. Villanova might still be in charge today if not for his illness, which forced him to step down in July of 2013, the same illness that would end his life in April of 2014. While he has worked to save his reputation with stints with MLS's Atlanta United and currently with the Mexican national team, Tata Martino's reputation was tarnished during his one season at Barca. Messi hobbled through the season and the Blagrana went trophyless. 
This might be the easiest explanation on this list. Luis Enrique had much better success than Tata Martino. A sometimes polarizing personality and a different, more direct style of play led to criticism, but he still won the treble in the face of any doubters. Enrique left after his third season, and while he may have wanted to stay, it felt at the time like it was the best thing for everybody involved. And that brings us to Valverde. He survived Roma, got the confidence of the board and the players following Liverpool. With Barcelona's worst start in 25 years, it sure feels like his last season. But if he is sacked, when? Before January? After the season? Can any amount of trophies give him another year? I'm not sure, but we'll have many more videos like this until then. If you like what you saw, keep checking this channel for more videos like it, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, Forza Barca.